Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about patterns. Um, generally speaking, humans, people, like to find patterns and things. We could look at these four shapes and we could look at how many lines are in each one and we could try and find a pattern with that. Or we could go at the more obvious one that we're going to talk about today and just how is each one changing, uh, kind of the shape or the, or the size of the shape as we go. Um, as we look at it, we could say, well, hey, the this, this second shape, it adds a different box onto each side. And then from there, from the second to the third, we add four more boxes on the end of each of the, the edges. And then again, we do the same thing for the fourth one. So we can look at this and we can, like I said, we could talk about the number of, of lines in there, but we're going we're gonna to look at the boxes. We're going to look at how many boxes are in each one. So in our first our first uh, square there, we've got one box. In the, the one with the green dots in here, we've got five boxes. And then we've got nine boxes and 13 boxes. So all of these things, when you look at them as a whole, as you look across all four of these things, they're called a sequence. A sequence is really just a, a pattern of numbers that, that, go, that change from one to the other in some kind of... Um, in some kind of pattern, I guess is, is the best way to put it. Um, each of these different pieces, 1, 5, 9, 13, each of these things are called different terms in the sequence. So we can identify the terms by choosing a number or a letter. Sometimes we choose a T because we say term. Sometimes we use U. Um, we'll use various letters, but we can say T of 1 is term 1. We could say T of 2 is term 2. So that's a subscript. That's not doesn't mean anything other than notation, right? So then we've got t of 3 equaling 9 and t of 4 equaling 13. But what we want to do and what we tend to want to do is what's going to happen as this thing keeps on going? Well, we could say what's going to be the nth term? So t of n. So that's, that could be the fifth term, the sixth term, that could be the hundredth term. And how do we find that? Well, generally to find those things, we have to look at the pattern again. You know, it all goes back to these patterns. So if we look at the first one, we've got t of 1 equals 1. And then we've got t of 2, well, that equals 1 plus 4. Or we can say that it's t of 1 plus 4. Right? We could, we could look at it either way. Because, again, we're looking for patterns. Yes, we could say it's 5, but we want to see how they're building on each other. So then what about term 3? t of 3 is going to be 5 plus 4 right? Or we could say that it's going to be term 2 plus 4 more. It's the same thing that's happening in the shapes. And t of 4 is going to be 9 plus 4 or term 3 plus 4. And then finally, what's going to happen when we get to the nth term? So as we keep on going. Well, if you notice, from each one of these things, we went from 4 to 3, we went from 3 to 2, we went from 2 to 1. When we're talking about the terms here, so as we're trying to determine how can we write this in a general way, um, or try and summarize this, I guess is a better way to put it, how do we summarize this sequence? We're going to take the previous term. So we'll say t of n minus 1. So if we had t of 4, we're going to have t of 3. That's 4 minus 1, right? And then what are we going to do with that t of n minus 1? Well, we're going to add 4 to it. And this type of pattern, this type of sequence, is called recursive. Recursive is when each, uh, each term is found by using the previous term. So each time that we, we want to find the next one, we have to go back and find the term before it. Or we have to basically start at number one and work all the way up to our nth term. Now it's not always the easiest way to go about it, but um, that's, that's a real common way to find uh, a pattern or a sequence as we use recursive methods. Let's look at another one and see if we can find something with that. Okay, so this one we now have kind of a stack of boxes. So using the same idea as before, we're going to look at how many boxes we have here. And obviously our first term or our first box, we're going to have one, or our first stack, I should say. In our second stack or our second term, we're going to have three. In our third term, we're going to have six. In our fourth term, how many do we have here? we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and a ten. Okay, so we've got ten 
uh, items in, or 10 boxes in the fourth term. And then in the fifth term, well, let's see, we already know that's 10. And then how many more? We got one, two, three, four, five. So we've got 15 in our fifth term. Okay, so that's just identifying the pattern that we can see, right? Now, how does this pattern continue to grow? And that would be, how do we find the nth term? Well, it, we, again, we go back and look at, let's kind of break this down. Our first term is equal to 1. Our second term is equal to 3. Or another way that we could write that is the first term plus 2. All right, so that's, that's going to be 3, so 1 plus 2. Term 3 is 6, and that's going to be the same as term 2 plus 3. Right? If we look at what term 2 is, that's 3. We add another 3 to that, and there's, there's our 6. So what's, what's term 4 going to be? Well, you've probably already figured this out. Term 4 is 10, so that's going to be term 3 plus 4. And you're probably seeing a pattern here now as we're going, right? So term 5 is going to be 15, which is term 4 plus 5. Great. So as we go down to the nth term, how do we do this? How do we find this? Well, we've already noticed that we've got 2 and 2. We've got 3 and 3. Right? So this is our term number and how many we're adding to it. So term 4 and 4. We've got term 5, we're adding 5. And then on top of that, each one of these things, we're using the previous term. So we're going to use the previous term, t of n minus 1. That's like our, our t of 1, t of 2, t of 3 in the blue circle here. And we're going to add our term number to it. So we're going to add n. So here we've got the previous term plus whatever number our nth term is. So if we had a t of 12, then we'd have to figure out what the 11th term value is, and then we would add 12 to it. It kind of makes sense, hopefully. Um, so our, our 12 would be, uh, our 12th term, we would have the n and the n, and then uh, the, uh, we would have to determine what the 11th term's value was. So see the difference that we're using n's, and then we're using the term itself. So n is the term number. The t of n minus 1 is actually the value of that term. You may want to pause that and, and make a note of that, because uh, that's, a, that's a fine distinction between the two. The term number, the value of the term, right? Okay. So um, can we come up with some kind of general formula for this or some kind of general equation when we look at this well if you if you sit here and analyze it for a little bit you might come up with something but quickly and efficiently the answer is no you know we there's not a way that we can find out what that n minus one that t of n minus one is without going through the whole sequence so we can't really come up with a general equation or a general formula for this sequence uh, very easily, that is. So, you know, if you, if you sit there and work on it, work on it, work on it, you might be able to come up with something. So let's look at a couple where we can come up with a general equation. So let's look at 5, 10, 15, 20, and so on, right? Fairly straightforward. We've got term, our, each of our terms, 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to go up to whatever our nth term is. So we're going to try and figure out how, how is this pattern changing, okay? So for our first term, we're taking... 5 times 1, or, or 5. For our second term, we got 5 times 2. And that's going to give us 10, right? Our third term, 5 times 3. Our fourth term, 5 times 4. So what's our nth term going to be? Our nth term will be, as you probably already figured out, it's going to be 5 times n. So here, it's really nice that we can come up with some kind of general equation or some kind of general formula. So with this particular, with this specific or this particular type of sequence, we could say, well, what, what is it if we're talking about the ninth term? Well, the ninth term is going to be 5 times 9, right? So just 45, so it'll be nice and easy. So our general uh, formula or our general equation is 5 times n. And hopefully that makes sense. All right, let's look at one more um, We've got 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and so on. So here we've got our five terms laid out. We're going to try and figure out what our nth term is. 
Okay, so let's look at the let's look at what kind of pattern we're seeing here. We've got one and one, we've got two and four, three and nine, four and sixteen, five and twenty-five. All right, give that a think for a second. And what kind of pattern are you seeing between these things? Well, again, you've probably already figured this out, but here our nth term is just going to be whatever term number we have squared. So we would take the term number, the n, and square it, and that's coming up with our, our, our term value, right? So in this video, we've looked at two different, types of, um, two different types of sequences and two different types of ways that we can, uh, to summarize these things. In these last two, we've come up with our general formula, so that way we can come up with a nice formula that we can plug in any term number and come up with the value. And then previously we talked about the re a recursive uh, formula or a, a recursive pattern where we have to use the previous term to build up to the, the current term. So these are two different types of, of ways to, to summarize sequences. We're going to look at a couple more in the next video. So we'll see you then.